After my recent experience playing the complex, I realized that the subject of choices mattering was something I wanted to talk a little more about. Because this is a subgenre now, it's a feature of gaming that people expect. Uh, the idea that choices matter, that the things you do or don't do in the game are impactful to the environment of the game and cause new sets of circumstances. And I think the inherent problem with this idea is that it's always done in terms of a player being given very limited information and having to make a quick choice, much like a nurse in an emergency triage situation where you have no history with the patients and you're being handed charts and you have to quickly decide who's going to live or die based on information that you have and how is that going to affect everything. And this is where I think this idea that choices matter falls apart, because you can't compress a life into a handful of paragraphs. You also don't know what people are going to do in the future. I was thinking about, at the beginning of the game, the complex, you are given a choice whether to save one or another character. You can choose the pregnant woman, or you can choose the young man. And the first rationalization that comes out of that is, well, of course I should save the pregnant woman because I'm saving two lives instead of one. Except then when you step back from that situation, you don't know if this woman is a drug addict. You don't know if this man is going to do something in the future that's radically going to change the place where he lives. You don't know if complications with the baby might cause the mother to die anyway. The problem with these kind of choices is you don't really have enough information because you can't look far into the past and you can't look far into the future within the scope of this game. In It's a Wonderful Life with Jimmy Stewart, even to sum up this this group of changes that happens when you remove George Bailey uh, from reality takes a good two hours to get into. Video games don't have that kind of time. The idea that choices matter is imperfect to begin with because it implies that what we think of as a good decision in the moment will always lead to good consequences. But as a human being, I'm not sure that life actually works that way. Again, because even in life we often make choices based on limited information or emotion, and rarely see the unintended consequences of choices. I think a game that examines that idea really well is the Yog, which is a multiplayer fairy tale game where your town is going to be destroyed in, I think, six turns by the mysterious evil force called the Yog, and you and several other characters try to develop your best abilities to help repair the town, basically, at the end. Because you can't stop the Yog, you can only try to help rebuild afterwards. So, getting to my point, almost every situation you deal with in the Yog has what would be apparent consequences to a choice, but very often the game throws a curveball at you. That the seemingly good choice sometimes leads to completely unintended consequences that are disastrous. That, to me, is closer to real life. <laughs> and I don't mean this as any kind of advocacy for making terrible decisions in life. We have to do the best we can, but I'm speaking in terms of video games. I'm not sure it's always necessary to reaffirm the idea that choosing the thing that immediately seems morally preferable to us is necessarily going to produce the best outcome. Any choice we make in our lives with limited information or strictly coming from emotion, is, it's making an arbitrary choice. And I think there's better ways to use the medium than to impose arbitrary life and death choices on players.
I think telling a good story is a lot more important than the specific choices you put into the hands of a player. If video games want to tell us that our choices matter, that our lives matter, I, I just think there's better ways to do it.